Hello, old school comics review. Okay, uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. This is going to be uh, comics to give to your friends who don't normally read comics. Um, I want to mix it up a little bit with different types of genres and things like that. Um, and keep in mind, it's not necessarily supposed to be like, you know, all-time greatest uh, graphic novels or all-time favorite comics or anything like that. Uh, just like I said, uh, different things to recommend to people who might not be too interested in uh, Secret Infinite Crises and, and things like that. Uh, so we're going to start in no particular order with Criminal by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Uh, this is just a straight-up crime fiction, uh, crime stories like that. It's not... Um, you know, uh, you know, necessarily a tribute to. It's not like Sin City. It's not a thing where it's like a tribute to like Mickey Spillane and Film Noir and things like that. And it's certainly not the sort of like glamorized, you know, criminals that you see in like a lot of like big blockbuster movies. There's not, you know, millionaire Colombian drug lords. It's not, you know, the big, you know, rich mafia Don family or anything like that. This is more like people you probably actually know. These are guys who do petty crime, guys who do B and E's, you know, uh, stick up guys who go in in and out of jails. Uh, this is just straight out of something like, you know, Elmore Leonard or uh, James Elroy, something like that. So you got a buddy who's a guy that, you know, you play poker with or you drink with at the bars on like, you know, Friday nights or whatever. And he's into stuff like, you know, you know, old thrillers like um, The French Connection or Sopranos or things like that. This is the type of comic book that you can give to him and not be embarrassed by. Okay, uh, next is going to be Identity Crisis by Brad uh, Meltzer and Rax Morales. This is kind of um, a look back at those old DC uh, superhero characters. Basically, it starts with a um, murder mystery, and as you go along and the characters try to find out what happens, there's like flashbacks, and you kind of find out um, that the you know good old campy days and things like that weren't necessarily so good, they weren't necessarily so lighthearted and pure and things like that. You find out that the heroes actually had to make some hard ethical choices, and maybe in one particular case they made uh, some wrong ethical choices. Um, I personally, as an individual, have a problem with you know certain aspects of this particular story, but you know not so much that I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. So if you have a friend who is, uh, or who thinks of like those old DC superheroes as like, you know, oh yeah, it's, you know, Challenge of the Super Friends, or it's also Squeaky Clean and things like that. Uh, this is a comic book you could give them that gives them a different twist on that. Uh, the art is um, a little bit dark, a little bit moody, really detailed, and like I said, it just gives it a unique spin on um, these old Silver Age type characters. <clears throat> Next, we have Bone by Jeff Smith. Uh, this is a lot of times when people say things like, oh, uh, this is an all-ages thing or, or whatever. A lot of times, they, what they really mean is this is a children's story. But this truly is an all-ages story. Uh, if you are 13, you can get something out of it. If you're 30, you can enjoy it. It's basically the story of Phone Bone, uh, Phony Bone, and Smiley Bone. Um, they get run out of their town of Boneville, and they have to kind of try to make it back. And on the way, they meet all kinds of interesting characters and have interesting adventures. Uh, they meet a young lady named Thorn. There's Grandma Ben. There are uh, threats by the rat creatures. There's uh, a dragon in it. And, you know, all kinds of fun and interesting things like that. The art is very clean. It's very crisp. Um... I would say, you know, it's kind of in vain if you like, you know, the movies that are coming out of Pixar, you might enjoy it. Or if you like that old-fashioned Disney uh, two-dimensional uh, animation, you'd enjoy it. Big, grand adventures, likable uh, characters, people learn things along the way. A um, little bit of kind of... Um, a couple of characters or a couple of things happen that are kind of on a sweet side. But on the other hand, when it's time for, you know, the danger or the uh, action or whatever, There's a re there actually is a real sense of drama. So, you know, give it a chance, um, and I think you'll have fun. If you're open-minded, like I said, if, you know, if you're into stuff like, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, Deadpool and Wolverine and stuff like that, 
you know, you might be a little bit apprehensive, but I'd say, hey, g- give it a shot, you know, if you're open-minded. Uh, next we have, um, let's go with Invincible. Invincible is a, is a superhero story, but it's not connected. It's not coming out from Marvel or DC or anything like that. It's from Image Comics, and it's by uh, Robert Kirkman, and the art is by Corey Walker. It's basically the story of this uh, young man. Uh, he finds out that he well he doesn't find out his dad is a uh he's a former superhero a formal superman type guy who's more or less kind of retired and you know he's a young man he's a teenager and his powers are starting to uh activate and you know now it's his turn to become a young superhero and basically uh you follow his journey as he learns how to be a superhero he goes out does his thing um it is really well well let me say this you know if you like old fashioned you know bronze age silver age superheroes it's all about the flashy costumes and the super villains um there's kind of a mythos and a legend behind it but you don't have to deal with all the continuity problems that you have to deal with over at Marvel and DC and more importantly i would say uh as much as it's about superheroes and action and adventure it's really kind of a coming of age story uh there's a point uh as the series goes on where there's a big twist where um Invincible, the young man, uh, finds out his name is Mark, uh, that things really aren't what he thought he wa- thought they were. You know, the world doesn't really quite work the way he thought it would. People aren't who they say they are, and things like that. So, you know, you could draw. I mean, you could take it very literally. Like I said, it's action, adventure, it's robots, there's big epic fights and things like that. Uh, but you could also take it as a metaphor for basically growing up and finding out what the world is really like. Okay, and we also have Strangers in Paradise by uh, Terry Moore. This is basically kind of a lighthearted story about love and relationships and things like that. It's the story of Francine, Kachu, and David. They're like, I'd say those are like the main three characters. Francine's a young woman uh, who's kind of a... kind of sweet maybe a little bit naive you know she's out there looking for love in all the wrong places her best friend is kachu who's kind of secretly or not so secretly in love with her she's kind of this angry person so on and so forth uh and you know their two personalities kind of play on play against or play off each other and then they have their friend david who's a young man who's kind of in love with kachu so you kind of have that sort of like love triangle thing going on um as the story goes along it does get kind of um daytime soap opera ish where you find out people have their hidden past and they've got secrets and skeletons in their closet and somebody's connected to an old crime family and somebody used to be an enforcer and somebody used to work for a prostitute and people out to get them here and somebody's uh working for a big company and they're doing this and they're doing that and blah 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 um but it's still really fun uh very interesting uh the art is very crisp very clean i think terry moore initially uh wanted to be a syndicated newspaper uh comic strip artist and the layouts and things like that and the uh the artwork kind of has that feel to it uh but it's it's uh it's really interesting this is the type of comic you can give to a grown-ass 30-year-old woman and not feel embarrassed. Okay, so those are a few things I wanted to, like, throw out there. Please give me your ideas. Let me know what you think. Uh, Thanks for listening to me ramble on, and you have a good one.